Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today Epic Games released Unreal Engine 5.1 Preview. Now, do notice the word preview. Do not you open your production projects in Unreal Engine 5.1. This is a preview. Now, it's been a while since Unreal Engine 5 was released. Unreal Engine 5 was released back in April, so that would be six months since the last release. And generally, uh, in Unreal Engine 4.x times, we got to release every about six weeks. So this has taken a lot longer, but there's reasons for that. There is a lot in this release. Now, I'm downloading it in the background. I'm going to go hands-on with it, maybe in a different video, or maybe when 5.1 final is released. Uh, but instead, we're going to look at at the release notes, which are pretty comprehensive. So we got this forum post today about the 5.1 release. And what we are checking out here is the public roadmap. So what is in 5.1? A lot. Under the rendering categories, we've got Lumen and Nanite improvements, path tracing improvements, GPU light mapping improvements, Niagara improvements, the new experimental strata materials, automated PSO gathering, uh, the on-demand shader compilation, which is probably the thing I'm most excited for, spoiler alert. Uh, in world building, we have data layer assets, uh, HLOD improvements, large world coordinate support for world partitions, actor editor context, source code, uh, source control integration improvements, uh, game feature plugin support for world partition, experimental. By the way, anything marked as experimental, there is a reasonably good chance that it will never go anywhere. It goes from experimental to beta. So experimental features may never see the light of day. Just one of those things to be aware of. Also, they can be considered alpha or pre-alpha, so don't expect them to work that well. Uh, and then in developer iteration, we have virtual assets, which is also pretty exciting. We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, memory insights updates, animation and characters. We have refined workflows for animation authoring, procedural control, recreation, animation retargeting, targeting for virtual production, game def deformation improvements, uh, debugging tools for gameplay, motion matching, again, another experimental thing, and pose warping, audio, again, they switched to their own audio system in-house, so we got a lot of improvements on the audio side of things. Here we got audio parameter modulation, um, modulation uh, audio gameplay volumes, a wave editor tool, additional audio nodes, soundscape. This is interesting. This was actually taken from the Matrix demo for creating ambient sounds. I'll get back to that one in a minute. Multi-channel audio output and uh, node connection visual feedback. Uh, in terms of platforms, they have an, a mobile deferred rendering improvements. So for your mobile platforms, a better renderer in the deferred rendering side. Uh, this one is also very nice. So native support for Apple Silicon, uh, improved workflows for XR development, and then geometry tools, we have uh, geometry scripting improvements and UV editor improvements. And then pipeline, we got a lot of improvements as well. Improved USD support, Material X in experimental version, some support for CAD and Datasmith, just as more on the engineering side of things. Uh, but it's ditto for LiDAR improvements and so on. But if you're using this in a non-game setting, these are definitely nice. And I do think USD is potentially the future. And Material X is also looking like potentially the future for a, a, like an interchange text format uh, between systems. Um, now in Chaos Physics, we've got Chaos Cloth improvements and uh, Physics Docs and Tutorials being updated. And then on the cinematic sides, we got a number of other improvements there as well. Uh, ditto on the framework side, so we got some improvements to blueprints in general, production-ready smart objects, production-ready mass entities, production-ready state tree, iris replication, again, experimental, gameplay framework updates, replication, uh, performance improvements, a uh, number of improvements to the editor, including the reference viewer navigation improvements, quality of life improvements, searching filtering, curve table editing, Python tip uh, hinting, UMG extending widgets using name slots, UMG view model, localized pipeline automation improvements, and the light mixer panel in beta. So a lot of improvements across the board. Some of these are big. Some of these are not so big. You can drill down into any of them, find out a little bit more detail. So example, smart objects are entities positioned in the world that encapsulate information on how to interact with them to trigger one-off behaviors for either the player or AI agents. And this will become production ready in Unreal Engine 5.1. So there is a ton of new features features and functionality in Unreal Engine 5.1 preview in various states of readiness. I'm going to look at a couple of them that I think are probably the most interesting. Obviously, the big new features for Unreal Engine 5 were Lumen and Nanite. Lumen is basically their... Um, real-time dynamic lighting system for global illumination, whereas Nanite is for doing, um, you can basically bring in extremely high dense meshes and it has an automatic uh, tessellation and LOD system, so you don't really have to care about that stuff, uh, both in the editor and at runtime. So Nanite and Lumen are the big new deals. Uh, in terms of what improved on Lumen, we got improved performance in the high scalability mode uh, with the goal of achieving 60 frames per seconds on consoles, improved support for foliage, uh -huh. uh, reflections on single layer water, 
excuse me, saying a certain word made me choke up. Uh, support for high quality mirror reflections on translucent surfaces. Smart, uh, support for end display. I think these are like those big smart displays you see around the world, but I may be wrong on that one. Uh, initial support for split screen performance characteristics still be determined. And then on the experimental side, hardware ray tracing in Vulkan. Uh, surface cache lighting only, no support for hit lighting yet, and many stability and quality bug fixes on the Lumen side of things. On the Nanite side of things, we got Nanite material switch in the Unreal in the material editor, additional diagnostics and debug modes, and many quality and performance improvements. Again, uh, Nanite 5.1 was one of the big new features. So again, you can see here super high density meshes, uh, and then it just kind of takes care of it for you. So a lot of the improvements here are basically... Uh, behind the scenes, making things work better, and so on. Uh, path tracing is uh, getting exponential height fog and sky atmosphere fog, uh, decals or decals, depending which part of the world you're from, single layer water, per instant custom data, light functions, and multi-GPU rendering. The one that I love the most, to be honest, and the thing that I hate working with Unreal Engine the most about is the damn shader compilation. There's nothing like opening up Unreal Engine, and for some reason, it's going to compile 7,500 shaders for the next six hours. Or when you create a new project and add something to the project, even though you're not using it yet, it has to pre-compile all the damn shaders. This one looks like a fix to that. So uh, compiles only the shaders needed to render what is seen on screen in the editor, optionally during platform development iteration. This results in a drastic reduction of shaders being compiled, especially on large projects. This one is a godsend to me. This is the thing that annoys me the most about working with Unreal Engine, and I'm pretty content. So who does this help? Anyone who syncs up routinely and is hit with a big shader compile, artists who iterate on materials, rendering engineers who iterate on shaders, anyone without access to a remote DDC for sh uh, cache shaders, and also YouTubers who often install uh, assets that they gave away on a monthly basis and then has to wait for the damn shaders to compile over and over and over and over again. I like this one. Now, for most people, you know, if you got a mature ongoing project, you're not going to have to redo the shaders over and over again. But for someone like me who opens up and creates a lot of new projects just to demonstrate things, waiting for shader compilation has always been infuriating. This is a nice update. Uh, by far my favorite. Next one, we've got a really kind of interesting one. This is Strata Materials. Again, this is marked as experimental. So there's no guarantee that this will actually ever go anywhere. Uh, but they'll be made available in 5.1 for early testing and feedback. Strata replaces the fixed suite of shading models such as default lit and clear coat with a more expressive modular framework provides a greater range of surface appearances and a wider parameter space performance skills according to complexity and desired budget with legacy materials having a similar cost as before so basically it is a new material system that is more modular and more flexible in what you can do with it be interesting to see this is one of the ones i'm going to have to play around with maybe do a follow-up video on it but strata materials again experimental so no guarantee that they ever actually make it into the engine but also pretty big uh, then we've got large world coordinate support for world partitions. Uh, large world coordinates generally don't matter too much to too many people, but if you are doing a galaxy scale game, you're going to like to have large world coordinates. So uh, that's an addition here. So I don't know if large world basically means 64 bit versus 32 bit, but it basically allows you to express Again, galaxy scale. So if you're making something like a, a no man's sky, but you actually want to have your world in uh, fixed actual coordinates, that's what large world coordinates generally allow you to do. And it's normally those types of titles that benefit from it. Uh, and it's a strange thing that's lacking from a lot of engines. This is one of those things that Unigen has always been able to brag about. But large world coordinates coming along, that is definitely a nice new addition to search certain people. And this one also, and so this is beta, so it's likely to make it in, but virtual assets. This is another thing kind of like on-demand shaders that I think is going to make a huge difference to a lot of people. Uh, reduce the size of data your team needs to sync down by virtualizing your assets. So team members will only sync core asset metadata and then pull down bulk data on demand if they need it. So in 5.1, we will support textures and audio assets with the plan to add additional assets in the future released unstructured bulk data is compressed using oodle data oodle was acquired when they acquired um bink uh, so it's part of their suite of tools it's a data compression system so this will reduce the hard drive space required for all team members and re result in smaller syncs which are faster so virtual assets are definitely nice in a team environment for me myself basically doing one offs it's not going to create a huge difference but if you're working uh, on a team should definitely be nice and another one that i'm kind of excited by is the soundscape uh, plug and play based uh state based ambient sounds so this they pulled from their matrix awakened project um 
Procedurally generated world soundscapes can procedurally generate ambient sounds, uh, rustling foliage, really guys, uh, birds, car sounds, etc. that are streamed in as the listener moves from area to area in the world. Plugin handles managing and composing uh, procedural ambient sound systems at scale, removing the need to create these systems and enables your sound designers to focus more on time on the key areas that matter most to your project. So essentially it allows you to do things like populate your world with noises and sounds and such, um, debris on the ground, birds chirping in the air, uh, traffic honking as it goes by and this thing uses a state-based system to handle those ambient sounds very cool system there and then we've got uh this one obviously is only relevant if you are on apple silicon uh and it's interesting to see that epic games are continuing to support the apple platform even though you know those two companies are not the best of friends uh but basically native support for apple silicon i'm going to be installing this version later today it was in the past running through the rosetta layer which is kind of an, a compatibility or emulation layer generally that causes uh a little bit of performance loss. I think I've heard a number like 20% and also causes greater battery usage. So if they switch to pure M1 silicon code, they're building for M1, um, you're going to get better performance. You're going to get better uh, stability. You're going to get better battery life. Uh, so this is a huge deal if you are on uh, the M1 platform. So if you have one of the 2021 or 2022 MacBook Pros or et cetera, uh, this is going to be a nice change for you. And that is it. Uh, so quite a bit here, uh, the Unreal Engine 5.1 preview. So it's been six months since Unreal Engine 5, but I got to say there is quite a bit here. And again, I only kind of skimmed over uh, the things that I found personally most interesting and thought that you guys might find most interesting. There's a ton more here. Again, you create procedural rigs. You've got a bunch of animation improvements there. You've got a UV editor that's got, now got UDIM support, for example, which is a way of having uh, multiple textures on, is it multiple UV textures on a single image? Yeah, I believe so. Um, so UDIM support there, improvements to Chaos Cloths. And then we got like just the smaller stuff like Blueprints itself were improvements. So you've got Blueprint namespaces are developed to aid in the organization categorizations of Blueprints, similar to how namespace functions in other programming languages. So this is like a fundamental structural change to the way Blueprints work, but it's very massive in its actual impact. Uh, also, header preview tool uh, helps and guides users that desire nativizing their blueprints for performance reasons. So we got some improvements there. We got just improvements across the board for Unreal Engine 5.1. Again, anything marked as experimental, it's experimental. It may never actually make it in, uh, but there is a ton in this release. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Unreal Engine 5.1. Of what you saw, what do you find most appealing? Now, first off, I have a MacBook Pro as one of my machines, so I do very much like the support for Apple Silicon. The other things I find very, very intriguing, uh, strata materials are going to change the way we work, so that one's definitely of interest to me. Um, but the one that I really, really, really like is this guy, on-demand shader compilation. That is going to change my life in a very positive way just because I create a lot of projects, use it for a little bit, and then throw it away. And a lot of times I'm compiling shaders that I will never, ever, ever, ever actually use. This is going to make my life a very happy place. So I'm looking forward to Unreal Engine 5.1. Again, it is a preview. Do not open your production level projects using the preview version. You have been warned, there do be dragons. But it is pretty exciting. So I can understand why you'd want to, just don't. Just install it, check it out, play with it. Just do not use this in production, please. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Unreal Engine 5.1 preview. What do you think? Let me know. Talk to you later. Goodbye.